So I'll just say, I just, I, I've started recording. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another uh, Hong Kong Study Circle, Hong Kong Philatelic Society meeting. Uh, yes. Okay. Let's. Okay. Um, Richard, it's all yours. Hey. Yeah. Uh, let's see what we got. Okay. Uh, welcome, everyone. Uh, let me, a uh, quick explanation. Aberdeen Post Office. I'm not going to deal with all the post offices of Aberdeen and so on. And it's really good that Harmon's here because I can, he can help me. Um, just some rambling observations, I've called it, rather than a, a full story. Uh, how did this happen? Uh, in April, uh, I wrote and it was published uh, an article about the year 1950. And in it, I said that there was an agency at Aberdeen. And then Simon Choi um, contacted me and he always asks very interesting and many times challenging questions. And he asked me about Aberdeen Post Office and what was going on in the post-war years. So this is, uh, if you fall asleep, please blame him. And also John Tang, who uh, um, contributed and helped an awful lot with this, as did many others. Anyway, here goes. Um, photograph here uh, is uh, of the Aberdeen Post Office, uh, it, its first location. Um, and most most uh, people in the past have said that it re reopened or opened on the 18th of February in 1959. So let's start. What actually happened on the 18th of February 1959? Well, according to Postmaster General reports, it said that full postal services were introduced there on the 18th of February, and that the hours of opening were extended. Shortly after that, the deliveries were started from Aberdeen Post Office rather than the General Post Office to the surrounding areas like Shuson Hill, uh, primarily, Apple Chow. Uh, and parcel delivery started, and then it, it evolved in this location. Um, and it closed down at the end of June 1962, moving to Tumsing Road, which is also in the centre of uh, town. Uh, you can see inside, because it's blown up a bit, you can see inside that this postal office was a rather small affair. And you can see a gentleman uh, leaning over the counter inside, inside. So being uh, from a sort of legalistic background, uh, I started to think, what on earth do these words mean? Well, clearly they mean that there was a post office or postal facility existing before the 18th of February. And this was what Simon Choi queried with me and that these facilities were merely upgraded on the 18th of February 1959 by permanently staffing uh, with the clerk and so on. So that's where we started off. So for the post-World War II, what's, what's been published? Well, in 1949, uh, Lobdell Hopkins did not mention anything about facilities in Aberdeen. Uh, Webb, Wellstead followed Webb really, said it reopened on the 18th of February. And then in 2004, in great work by Proud, he, he said it reopened in 1959, but that an agency was opened in 1945. Um, but 
it was just dealt with by the delivery postman and he sold stamps and took delivered letters and all that kind of thing and this was sort of repeated with a little bit different by the Chinese Philatelic Association and Hong Kong Post uh, publications in 2014. So that's what's been published, but then I thought, oh, I better find out for myself. So from primary sources, then this is what I found about the post-World War II. In a report at the end of the British military administration period in May 1946, it said that seven branch post offices had reopened and two were about to open. I don't think any of these were Aberdeen. In mid-1947, there were plans approved in principle by the colonial secretary to build three post offices, including one at Aberdeen. But this was rejected, I'm not sure on what grounds, by Public Works Department and the Urban Council, and therefore it didn't materialize. At the end of 1947, I know that there was this bus strike in Hong Kong, and it stated that deliveries were made from the GPO to Aberdeen using the GPO van rather than by bus. So deliveries were in hand. And then from the annual reports in 1949, which is some 10 years before 1959, obviously, um, there was a postal kiosk at Aberdeen with deliveries from there to Upley Town. It was not mentioned in the 1947 and 48 reports. And the 1948 report did mention other offices and special arrangements. Offices like uh, Chung Chow Post Office and arrangements at Sha Kok, etc. The 1953 and 1957 PO guides listed Aberdeen as a post office or as a local office with daily local deliveries. And in 1959, it confirmed that full postal services were, were implemented there. So therefore, what can we conclude from all of this? Well, we can conclude that the Aberdeen post office existed at the same location before February 59, probably from 1949. I could not find anything to convincingly support uh, Prouds and the CPA statements that it actually reopened in November 1945. Of course, this is all also possible. And apart from that, most of what they've said was actually very relevant. And Proud's description is quite accurate. He said that it was about the size of a garage and very restricted and as we saw earlier so it was and this was unstated previously so uh, the question that i had in my mind was where actually was this post office well it was if you can see it in the top right hand corner this is a 1958 map so that's before 1959. And it shows the post office on the end of Old Street. Uh, that location, if you look at the present day to the centre uh, map, is now no longer, the building is no longer there. And it's now the old Main Street Rest Garden. Okay. So rather than maps, if we go to sort of a visualization of this in 1961, top right hand side, that's the old police station. And then this 
building here, rather old looking building, is where the post office was. And if my shaky hands can show you, that is the location of the post office at 1961 and where we're discussing all the long. So this, this looks like a very, a rather old building. Um, in actual fact, it was the old Harper Masters office. And this is actually predated the police station. So here is a photograph in 1900. And then you can see the police station. And below it here, you can see the building in question. I've also added in here a map of uh, Aberdeen, six by one, showing in 1888, just this one street with buildings, including the Harbour Office. And the main feature of Aberdeen at that time was the, was the dry dock. So let's uh, think about this, the particular building. I hope I'm not boring you with this. So the short history of this building is that it was opened in December 1874 as the Harbour Master's office. It's an outstation of the main office in uh, central Victoria. And it was, it was used there. There was no post office. It was the first government building in uh, Aberdeen. And it was run by the police. Generally, in these places, in the old days, the police were used as the harbour office representatives. They also were sanitary board representatives, uh, etc. But this continued under an inspector or a sergeant of police through until February 1892, when they moved out of this building to the new police station up the hill. Uh, thereafter, part of this building was used as uh, missionary schools, and it was reoccupied by the Harbour Office in 1911, excuse me. Well, basically, that's all that I could find out about the post-war. So we've identified where it is and what it is. Uh, but what about pre-war? Well, what we know about the pre-war is that, it, along with other police station post offices, uh, opened in 1912, uh, under the charge of a European police sergeant. If there wasn't a European police sergeant, for example, at Santin, then it didn't open until there was one. They, the police sergeant was paid an allowance of uh, $60 a year. Uh, they got allowances for the harbour department, from the sanitary department and so on for doing various duties. But this allowance ceased, it came from the budget of the post office in May 1913. Deliveries to Aberdeen first started appearing in 1914, and they were once a day. Then in 1920, there was a posting box, it was numbered number 63. Uh, installed at Aberdeen. It was not there in 1916, uh, so it was erected in, in between these two dates. 
from the in the 1920s, the postal guides said that letters for rural districts, which would have included Stanley, uh, all the, along the south coast of Hong Kong Island, they would be forwarded to the nearest police station for delivery. But delivery couldn't be guaranteed timelessly. There's evidence of this. I, I found that. Uh, 1923 notice where mail to Repulse Bay was actually uh, delivered by the policeman at Stanley. So the, that's how it sort of worked. The last mentions of deliveries uh, I could find was in about 1933. In 1934, then the famous Bishop Morton Sayer book states that there was a post office at Aberdeen, but the letters were dealt with at the GPO. In 1939, then correspondence on Hong Kong Island was delivered from the GPO and the Stanley Postal Kiosk, which opened in August 1938. The GPO deliveries included Aberdeen and Shuson Hill, Utley Tower. Amazingly, four times a day. What else do we know? The annual statistics issued by the government of Hong Kong from 1912 to 1941 indicate that there was a postal facility of some sort at Aberdeen throughout the period. And there was no post office clerk at Aberdeen during the whole period. So summarizing, there was a postal facility at Aberdeen for the whole period. Probably daily deliveries for the whole period between the GPO and Aberdeen. And the post box was installed uh, between 1916 and 20, and collections would have been made from there, uh, as you would expect. So the cancellations from Aberdeen, uh, you know, these, they're very, very rare. And there are two types, the type B first, let's deal with that. Um, there are known stamps of this cancellation, but my humble opinion, these are just philatelic and it's unlikely that this date stamp was actually used in anger at Aberdeen. Type A, they range from 1925, uh, sorry, no, uh, 1912 to 1928. And there are, I only, have heard mention of three covers. The one on the bottom left was uh, in the Brian Mosley collection, but I think actually also it was in Harmon's uh, collection, or it may still be in Harmon's collection. I'm sure he could uh, clarify that. Apart from that one, I only know or hear tell of two other covers. So I thought that that was it really, uh, that covered Aberdeen. And then quite by accident, I spotted something when I was uh, researching post boxes. I mentioned earlier there was a post box. And I, on the very good website, Gulo, please use it, uh, I saw this. It was a photograph taken in the 1920s. Uh, note, the post box on the wall, uh, as described in the 1920 postal guide. So, and I thought to myself, wow, this looks quite familiar. And then I thought, well, and I compared the 1960s post office, where it was in 1959, and they're exactly the same, except that above the door on the right side, there's a minor alteration 
and the post box had been moved. But the number hadn't changed. You can still see it's number 63. So this is quite, <laughs> quite interesting to me. And these post, the post box installed between 1916 and 1920, the same thing sort of happened, but at the police stations at Shaokewan and Stanley, same period, same thing happened, post boxes erected. So one wonders why that was. And one reason could be that the procedural way that things were dealt with at these postal facilities changed and that less emphasis was given to the police and more emphasis was placed on the post office to look after themselves. And this is a theme that you'll see going through the 20s and 30s in all areas, apart, apart from Chen Chao and uh, Sai Kung and Cha Tai Po. Okay, so one wonders why did this post box move from where it was on uh, the 1920 photos to the ones in 1960? And also, what are the what are those letters U.S.E. in the top left? Must be house, I guess. But what kind of house? So I I made some inquiries through the Guillo website, and then somebody came back about a fire station. And the photograph on the top right was was posted. This was taken during the filming of Love is a Many Splendid Thing in 1955 uh, in Aberdeen. Uh, that was the Susie, Susie Wong and I think William Holden, if I remember correctly. Yeah. But it shows two of the doors uh, with the fire engine red, uh, the fire station. And it also shows the relocated post box on the far right. Unfortunately, some, some uh, person's laundry uh, blocked whether I could see post office or not above the right hand door. But anyway, so then I checked out about this, uh, this uh, fire station. And 1919, there was a small one, but in 1934, they were going to build a new fire station. But they decided not to because they could accommodate it within alterations to the old harbour built. And that's what happened. So logically, to me, uh, these alterations, the movement of this box occurred probably in 1934. But was that when the post office started, as they say in Bishop Morton and Sayer? Or was it there beforehand? So that's about as far as I've got so far. So what, what can we conclude or what can't we conclude? Well, I think we can definitely conclude that uh, there were facilities in the same location in the old Harbour Office building before February 1859. And there was probably some kind of postal facility uh, between um, 1912 to 1941, initially run by the Sergeant of Police. In all likelihood, this pre-World War II facility was located in the same place as it was after the war. I think, I think if you think about what was going on immediately after the war and the difficulties associated with it, then 
they would have made use of something that was there before, with not reinventing something. So this postal facility may have been operation in 1934 when they re rejigged the building to accommodate the fire station, but maybe it was there all along from 1912, who knows? I suppose the main conclusion is that uh, much more homework needed, as I've written there. And this, the whole thing reminds me of uh, something that Aristotle first said, and uh, Einstein sort of repeated, in that it's an example of the more that you learn, the less that you know. Lastly, uh, these are just the acknowledgements. So I'd like to say thank you to all of those and recommend the website so it's to you. And special thanks to everyone who helped me with this. Uh, I think you, you know who you are, so thank, thank you all. Hey. That's it. Thank you very well much, Richard. Well done, Richard. Yes. Uh, anybody want to ask any questions? before we close this session. Yeah, um, well, I asked, I'm Simon. Um, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, uh, yes, as Richard mentioned me a few times, I would like to say a few words. Um, the first time I saw that picture, uh, the, the black and white photograph uh, that Richard mentioned that uh, published in the, 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 the uh, Hulu uh, website, in, in fact, I, I was puzzling about the location of, of, of that uh, post office for quite a few months. Uh, in, this, in fact, uh, we, we had a discussion with the Hong Kong Collectors Group here. Uh, uh, what, uh, what, what does the, the last few characters USE mean? And at that time, I suggest that uh, maybe custom house and, and, and then, uh, yeah. And then I started to search uh, some old locations of the custom house in Hong Kong. Uh, my, my, my initial thought um, uh, was, was that it might be uh, uh, Sha Tin. Uh, you, you know, the, the old Sha Tin uh, uh, police station was in fact uh, located in the present uh, uh, Sha Tin City One uh, estate, uh, just next to it. And, and because uh, on my way home, sometimes I, 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 I will take the route uh, which, may, uh, which may pass that, that location. And then I tried to, to compare the background of the picture and, and the exact location of present time. And yeah, and, and then I decided it, 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 it should not be that location. And then by some uh, chance, I, I, it happened that I, 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 I ultimately I, I found out that location of, 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 of uh, that photo was in Aberdeen. And then uh, I, I deliberately went there to that location that Richard mentioned in, in that map, which is now a, an open space in the present day. I went there, took some photographs, and then I, I went to the Harbour Friends and, and, and then uh, it, um, um, to observe the, 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 the exact background and compare it to, to the background of that picture. And I confirmed that is the location of David in office. So that's why when Richard um, published the article about Aberdeen, I asked Richard, some questions about that location. And in fact, uh, Richard's presentation had already answered basically all my questions. Uh, what does the USE mean? Uh, well, in fact, uh, when I was having the discussions with Richard, I suggested uh, whether it's custom house or firehouse. And then at that time, we didn't have any uh, exact uh, answer yet. And yeah, it seems that it should be firehouse, I, I, I would say. And then, uh, where, where the, after the 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 the, uh, uh, the post World War uh, stage, uh, whether there was a uh, some kind of foreign uh, postal services in, in Aberdeen before the uh, the, the publicated uh, opening of the office in 1959, and yeah, that that's the whole story for 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 Richard's very very good presentation, and yeah, in, in fact, many thanks to Richard for all the research, and 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 you, you in fact, you have answered all my questions in mind. Thank you, Richard. Ah, thank you. Yes, excellent. Um, right. Um, anybody have any questions to ask? 
Okay, in that case, um, at this session, we are running out of, nearly running out of time. And um, we can come back in a second session in about five minutes time. And uh, there will be some other presentations by other others. I think Susan and Sam Ingle may have a few things to show. And um, uh, I'll see you then. Okay. Take a rest. <laughs>